Okay. Hello, everyone. How are you today? It's K. So uh, this is the 28th of April, 2022, on Thursday. So I hope you're having a great day today. This is a live. So uh, I wish you having a great trading day today. So uh, let's check some charts together, as usual, in Forex pairs, in some other markets and see what's happening because it looks like markets are still active today JPY is weak after the policy meeting so uh, we have lots of trends on the JPY pairs so uh, we can check these pairs also so uh, yeah sorry I just woke up I was taking a nap and just woke up because it's been quite busy for me so I decided to take a nap before I do the lives and uh, yeah, after this, I have a couple of meetings, two meetings or three meetings actually after this live stream. So I need energy to charge up. But now I feel so fresh after waking up. So uh, let's get started right now. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me switch the screen right now. Okay, and uh, as a quick disclaimer, as usual, uh, basically, this YouTube content is all based on the, my experience for uh, educational purposes only. So uh, when you take a trade, please do at your own risk. And also, since this is live, if you can please follow the rules and guidelines, that would be great. And also, recently, there are so many fake accounts of mine on social media. So I have no Telegram, no Instagram, no Facebook no direct messages, so please be careful. Okay, so yeah, let's see who's here first. Good to see you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Great to see you. Okay, I see many people joining here too. All right, good to see you, everyone. Alfonso and um, let's see, uh, Suleiman. Good to see you, Sorosh. Enek Hagao, Kevin, Marcus, Asif, Richard. And uh, Taifan, uh, Nak, hi, thank you for joining also. James, Eduardo, and uh, Gary, Uday, Jay Wise, Mahesh, Benedict, and Hui, Arukadi, and Mark Won, Oscar, and uh, Chike, Zach, Buta, and Austin, Rajko, TikTok, Alfonso, Stefano, thank you for joining, great to see you. All right, Augustine and Vince, Rohit, all right, Active, Himela, Anis. Thank you for joining also. Good to see you. So, is anyone trading right now? Anybody trading right now on positions? All right, it's Meleg and uh, Yahui. Thank you for joining. Um, Bokod and William. Shamroz, Ivan, Muhammad, Arara, see you, and Faiz, good to see you. Oh, Hui says, uh, I'm selling pound CAD, running 100 pips. Oh, that's great. Great. Yeah, so let's start to look at the pound CAD first. Well, let me turn up the volume a little bit on the BGM. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, let's see. Okay, I see some comments now about your trades. Cat JPY, all right. All right, James, good to see you. Still setting on pound USD. All right, you're still holding it. Wow, it's a long time holding. That's great. That's great. All right, Danish, Ek Hagal, no, okay. All right, let's see. CAD JPY, all right. Pound USD, USD JPY. Okay, okay. Yeah, AUD NZD, okay. Euro AUD long. Okay, so looks like you have positions. Uh, for me, I have no positions. Um, so, yeah, I'm just uh, basically uh, came here to screen charts again. So, let's do it together to see what's happening. So, yeah, let me start with the Euro USD. So, Euro USD is nicely downtrending. This is a daily time frame. And not only the daily chart, but also the weekly is downtrending as per Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. 
So looks like we have new members here today. So let me briefly introduce myself. My name is K, and just like K E I K, and uh, I am a full-time flag trader. I'm a Japanese, but I'm not in Japan right now. I'm in Dubai since last July, and I trade mainly forex. I used to trade gold, but not anymore because it's a bit quiet uh, and it's a bit uh, ranging spiky. So I'm away from the gold, but I'm trading Forex mainly. And I have been trading Forex for the last nine years. This is my ninth year this year. So time flies. It's been, I've been trading for nine years. And uh, I'm using Ichimoku Kinkou Hyo as my main strategy. So Ichimoku Kinkou Hyo is the Japanese indicator that captures the momentum and direction of the market. And at a glance, you can capture the equilibrium of the market because uh, the market tends to go towards the direction where equilibrium collapse and then return back to the equilibrium. So I use Ichimoku Kinko Hyo as my main strategy, but I do so in multiple time frames. So if you're new to multiple time frame analysis, I think it might be a bit difficult or confusing but uh, I will uh, talk step by step and how I analyze these charts. So usually I start screening by the daily chart basis every day. On the weekends, I will check the weekly chart because most likely the market goes towards weekly direction on the week. So this is still Thursday in the middle of the week. So I check the daily chart mainly, but sometimes in the week, I come back to the weekly or even monthly chart to see what's happening in the market in the bigger picture. So this is actually um, the multiple time frame mindset in analysis. So weekly is so this is a weekly time frame that I'm showing right now. And whenever I capture the trend directions, I do so in Ichimoku. And the way I capture trend is super super simple. Ichimoku offers many strategies many theories but uh, I simply look at the Kumo and Kijun Sen directions. When Kumo is down and Kijun Sen is also down, simply that's bearish. And when they are up, that's simply bullish and that's it, very simple. And then I look into the details but this is my start point. So uh, in this one, Euro USD weekly chart, I can see Kumo down, Kijun Sen down also. So this is a bearish. It broke the support, also broke the previous doji. This is about the price action. But uh, I think uh, last week was doji. And this week it broke bearish. And this is very significant. And also I can see that there was a doji here on the week of 7th of March. And this doji support was breaking also bearish too this week. So this is actually strong downtrend right now happening. So when I see this, I follow the downtrend. So I only look for the selling edge. I never buy from here. Uh, even if there's a support here or, uh, you know, in a support in a weekly or daily time frame, I always look for the sell chance as long as Kumo down and Kijun Sen down. And so that's the weekly situation. It's downtrending. And also the daily chart is also bearish. This is a daily time frame. And in the daily time frame, you can exactly see the same. Basically, Kumo down and Kijun Sen is down also. And then in price actions, I can see that there was a like a engulfing candle inside bars. There was a small wick overshoot, but uh, mostly this uh, the candlestick on the 14th of April, high and low has been including a future couple of candles and uh, 25th of April, exactly, it broke bearish. And now it's going down right now. So that's, uh, and then, so that's, this is downtrending as per definition. Uh, and also, um, if you're following my lives and videos, I have been mentioning that this is a breakout of the monthly uh, trend line. So if you also look at the monthly chart all the way up in the monthly chart, then um, I was drawing a P wave. The P wave is the Ichimoku way 
to say it's a squeezing like a triangle range where the highs are lower and lows are higher getting higher this is a p wave because when you put one line like this straight vertical then the shape looks like p so basically that's why it's called p wave in ichimoku so i was seeing the p wave so i thought this week or this month it will be supported and goes up and back to kumo or kijun sen however it broke sharply and that's why this also explains that this month has been a strong downtrend so that also confirmed me that i will continuously look for the sell chance yeah, and also it broke the support from the from the March 2020. So now it's bearish continuously. So like this, I do the overall like bigger picture analysis first, and then break it down to the lower time frames to see if I can find the entry confirmation to sell or not. So yeah, you wrote this. So this is basically what I do on any all the pairs. Uh, whenever I look at the USDJPY. Or pound JPY or pound CAD or any pairs, I do this step by step from higher to lower time frames. Always top down analysis. I never go from the lower to higher. I always go from higher to lower time frames to analyze. To see uh, which way the market's going in the bigger picture. So that's my introduction. So this is how I basically analyze charts. So Euro USD once again is downtrending on the weekly and daily, and then uh, I also break it down to the one hour time frame. So in one hour, it's also bearish. You can see that the Kuma has been nicely trending down, and Kijun Sen is also pointing down. So basically, this is bearish. I will continuously look for the sell chance. You can also draw descending trend line. I think there were there was uh, three touches previously. So you can also see that the market has been downtrending. It was also resisted by the Kijun Sen. So as long as market is below Kijun Sen in this market, this is bearish in one hour time frame. So if I see also downtrend in one hour, then I look at the five minute to look for the selling edge. But usually before doing that, I check some other pairs to see if uh, other pairs are trending so that um, uh, you know if I see any other pairs that has better trends and better confirmations and I will take the other one so this is just one of the pairs that's trending down right now nicely as per uh, Ichimoku and my strategy so I mark this one as green like this and then I screen basically all these 21 pairs on my watch list like this yeah, so um, Euro USD is downtrending, so uh, we'll come back this to, to this pair and uh, talk about the lower time frame confirmation part. But before that, let me quickly screen some other pairs. So Euro Pound has been ranging, so you can see that unlike Euro USD, this one is Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat. You can see the market is ranging completely, so I, I don't trade on this one right now. This is complete range and no direction so i will i won't i won't even spend time to look at the lower time frame situations so let's see euro aud is also flat ranging right now euro jpy today is bullish but overall it's still you know uh, i would say this is a bit tricky market so i will stay away from this one and euro cad is bearish this one is nicer, better downtrend than Euro JPY. It broke the support also today, so I think this is the new downtrend. So I see that this is downtrending, Kumo down, Kijun Sen down. And then in one hour, this one is also bearish. You can also see that the Kumo is down and the Kijun Sen is also down. Also looks like now that price is touching the Kijun Sen, so it might be resisted. And go down this way so in that sense this is also a good timing to look for the selling edge so euro cad is also on my watch list right now i, I mark the uh, green on this pair like this so then i will go back to the daily chart let's see 
Euro Swiss franc is now ranging completely in another direction. And the USD JPY is bullish. Yeah, JPY has been so weak today, so it broke the uh, resistance. There was a big news in the Japan policy meeting. So uh, JPY has been weakening very much because of the low rate, low interest rate. So uh, it's just going up right now. So USD has been so strong also today. And that makes it also that this pair USD JPY to be bullish. So you can also see that the Kumo up, Kijun Sen up, so it's bullish. And then in one hour, let's see. In the one hour chart, I can see that the Kumo is up, Senko Span A is bullish, but Kijun Sen is currently flat. So I will wait until Kijun Sen turns bullish to look for the buying edge. And it looks like it's about to break the resistance. So when it breaks, we can come back and uh, look for the buying edge. But for now, I just cancel this one because Kijun Sen is now flat. When I screened before, it was up Kijun Sen, but now it's flat Kijun Sen, so I just cancel the uh, the green because whenever you see Kijun Sen flat, it might be resisted and go down this way. Oh, as I talk. It just broke the resistance and now uh, we see Kijun Sen angle is bullish now. So uh, I will mark green this one. So this one is also a good pair to look for the buying edge. And then uh, let's see, let me screen some other pairs. Uh, USCCAD, uh, this one is uh, daily chart is flat because Kumo is too small. So when you see Kijun Sen is up, nice, but uh, Kumo is too small. so. It may be resisted at 1.29. This is round number 1.29, the previous resistance, and then it may be trace. But uh, I I said this uh, red because I was seeing the four hour is bullish. Yeah, four hour chart, Kumo up, Kijun Sen up, so we can follow the four hour direction. But I think lower time frames are now flat. One hour. Is uh yeah one hour is now flat Kumo flat Kijun Sen, so I don't turn green I just turn red, and uh go to the next pair. So let's see next one is USC Swiss Run. I think I saw a couple of comments who who are taking trades on the USC Swiss Run. So uh, because this one is also bullish now, um Kumo is up Kijun Sen is up so it's bullish. And in the one hour time frame, it's also bullish. Yeah, Kumo is up, Kijun Sen up. So um, yeah, this one is also a good pair to look for the buying edge. So we have many pairs um, trending and trade opportunities right now as per my strategy. So that's good. So the next one is Pound USD. I see lots of comments in the Pound USD, Pound CAD. So first, let me look into Pound USD. So let me just take out these lines. The Pound, um, yeah, Swiss franc. Oh, sorry, this is USD Swiss franc. Let me go to Pound USD. So yeah, Pound USD has been going down. Kumo is looking nice in the daily chart. Kijun Sen is also nicely downtrending. So I think this pair is a good pair to look for the sell chance. And one hour chart is uh let's see it's also bearish so pound usd is now turning green also yeah okay so yeah we can continuously look for the sell chance on this pair too and then let's see pound jpy jpy is strong so it's bullish today and yesterday but the market is technically in between kijun sen and kumo so when I see this situation, I simply stay away. This is range in a daily chart. And let's see, in a four hour chart, it's range also. So simply I will stay away when I see this. I prefer to take another green pairs to trade. Because uh, if it's range as per Ichimoku, then it may go up and it may go down and we can't tell which way it's going. So even if you buy, just because today is bullish, if you buy, it may reverse backwards soon. 
So uh, simply, I will stay away from Pound JPY today. And Pound CAD is downtrending too. I see some comments on Pound CAD also and running profits for some traders. So that's great. But the Pound CAD has been downtrending. It broke the support and going down. And in one hour chart, it's obviously bearish also. So uh, Pound CAD is also another good one to look for the selling edge. Looks like Pound is so weak right now. And CAD, USD are strong. And I think that's why the markets are going towards that direction. So let me check the other pairs. Pound AUD, daily chart flat, so I will stay away. And Pound Swiss Run is... Uh, let's see. Pound Swiss Run is... Okay, it's at the support. Okay, so it's not breaking the support yet. So once the market breaks support, then that's a new downtrend. And since pounds weak today, it may break the support uh, today or this week. But uh, until we see the clear support break, we have to stay away. So this one, most likely, I won't check today. It will focus on other trending pairs right now. So let me just look at some other pairs and then uh, break it down to the lower time frames. So AUDUSD is down in the daily chart and also in the 4 hour chart it's bearish also and let's see in 1 hour it's bearish too so yeah AUDUSD is also a good pair to look for the selling edge we have many pairs trending right now okay and the AUDCAD is also uh, down in the daily chart and in the 4 hour chart it's also bearish it's down yeah Kumo down Kijun Sen down and one hour chart also looks to be bearish. Yeah, one hour Kumo down, Kijun Sen down. It broke the support. So this one is also green. Wow, so we have many pairs. When I was sleeping, looks like markets are active, becoming active now. So this is very exciting to see many markets are trending right now. So, okay. AUDJPY is in between Kijun and Kumo, so it's flat. I won't look at it. Yeah, this one too. AUD Run is also flat. And CADJPY is bullish today. Okay, this is above the Kijun Sen, so let me check the 4 hour. Okay, 4 hour is flat, so I will stay away from this one. And CAD Run is also flat, Kijun and Kumo, so I will stay away. And finally, Swiss Rang JPY is bullish today. And let's see, Kumo and Kijun Sen angles. Okay, Kumo is up, Kijun Sen is up. So let's check the 4 hour. Okay, 4 hour is range. So I will stay away from this one too. So we have many trending pairs. So Euro USD once again is bearish. Uh, and Euro CAD is also bearish as per Ichimoku and my strategy. And USDJPY is bullish also. And uh, USD Swiss franc is also bullish. Pound USD is bearish. Pound CAD is bearish. And AUD USD is also bearish. And AUD CAD is also bearish. Okay, so that's my overview for, this, for these pairs on my watch list. So, uh... Yeah, so let me check news. I think these uh, these trends can be caused by the news previously. So let me check the uh, the news website. So today, let's see what kind of news we had. Let me filter it. Only pick the high and mid impact news. So okay, today. On Thursday, we had, uh, okay, so we had many news. First, we had the policy statement in Japan. So Kuroda said that uh, the rate will be, you know, kept lower, and that's why JPY has become weak now. And then, uh, okay, in Germany, there was CPI, and CPI was positive. I mean, it was better than previous, better than consensus in the, in the number. So it was, uh, it was both. And USD is now looks like it's uh, it's uh, it, the turnout was negative, minus one point four, 
much worse than the previous in consensus. So with this in mind, I will also look at the strength chart. So this is a currency strength chart website that I'm using right now. And uh, you can actually find a link on the below description and check my uh, check my uh, website and access to this uh, website. This is for free and you can anyone can use it. So uh, right now I can see USD is bearish. I uh, sorry USD is bullish now, and uh, CAD is up, Euro is going up, and Pound is a bit weak, and AUD is getting weaker now, and uh, JPY is bearish. So I can see that the uh, let's see, so USD is bullish, Pound is going down. And uh, also AUD is going down, so most likely right now I will focus on USD and uh, AUD. Okay, AUD is going down just just right now. This this side refreshes every five minutes, so I can see that the AUD is going down, uh, USD is going up, and also CAD is going up. And a uh, pound was bearish, but now it's kind of bullish. So in this case, I will focus on these, um, yeah, on these uh, three pairs. That's USD, so AUD pairs. Uh, USD, AUD USD is the most volatile market. So I will first look at that one, AUD USD, and then uh, CAD uh, AUD. Yeah, AUD CAD. I will also look at it. So let me check these two pairs first. So first I check the USD AUD. You see if it's uh, also trending. USC. So AUD USC is here. Okay, it's bearish in the daily chart. It's bearish also in the four hour. So one hour is also bearish. It just broke the support. So let me go down to the five and talk about how I enter the market. And for those who are new to my channel, in the lower time frames, I don't use Ichimoku because Ichimoku is a bit lagging and uh, it's a bit uh, tricky. So I only use the Bollinger Band and Stochastics to look for the entry chance in the five. So, uh, okay, so this is, uh, okay, so I can see that the market is going down, broke the support and it's going down nicely afterwards. And uh, I can see that there's a, there, there, it was a P wave. It was a descending P wave, and it has it has broken bearish now. So I think this can be a new beginning of downtrend, which is nice. Square six is a dead crossing. There's a band walk, so I think, uh, yeah, I would wait for. I think in this case, I just wait for the pullback and pushback uh, to sell. So I will closely monitor this one, but I can't see the trend tra trading edge. I can't see the selling edge right now. So I will continuously monitor this one. And then uh, the next one is USD. Um, okay, so next one is CAD AUD. Okay, so CAD, so AUD CAD was also bearish. Hold on, let me go higher time frame. Daily broke the Kumo down, and four hour is now bearish. Kumo down, Kijun Sen down, and one hour chart is also bearish. It broke support also the previous Doji breakout, so this is nice. And then I look at the five minute, looking for the setting edge. And let's see. Okay, so this one looks identical to AUD USD. It was the P wave breakout in the five minute. And uh, yeah, now it's going down. Square 6 is dead crossing. And there is a band walk. But I can't see another confirmation to sell. So it might pull back in this case. In my experience, it might pull back. So I will wait for the pullback and uh, yeah, like a pushback and pullback to sell. So yeah, this pair is for me not a good timing to sell. So I have to monitor this one too until I see the trading edge in the lower time frames. 
So uh, yeah, so let's look into some other pairs to trade. So now again, I have uh, in the strength chart, the second strength one looks to be uh, Euro and uh, AUD. Right now, Euro is up, AUD is bearish. So let's check Euro AUD. Okay, Euro AUD. Uh, okay, let me go to the daily. Daily chart is now flat. And 4 hour is also flat, so I can't trade the Euro AUD. So simply, I will check some other charts now. So uh, let's see. Oh, I see some comments now. Thank you for joining, everybody. Great to see you here. Okay. Oh, I see many comments. Pound CAD is falling like a ton of bricks. <laughs> yeah, Pound CAD is going down. Yes, yeah, so let's check this one too. So let me look for the trading edge in the pound CAD in the five minute. Okay, uh, so now this is, um, there was a, okay, when I first see this one in the five minute, I just noticed that there was a consecutive dojis here for 20 minutes. And this consecutive dojis has been broken bullish. So this might turn bullish from here. And uh, we, we can't tell how far it goes up. So, when I see this breakout of the previous consecutive dojis, it stops me to trade, to sell. I have to see the consecutive reverse in the wave to sell. And most likely it goes bearish. But right now, I can't see the sign of the bearishness in the 5. So, I guess I will just hold. Yeah, looks like it also broke the trend line in the 5. So, it may turn bullish. So this one is not a good timing to sell. But uh, we can continuously monitor a pair to sell. If it breaks support, I think that will be a good chance to sell. But unless it happens, we have to stay away. So we can we come back to this chart also. Okay, I can see... Uh, yeah, oh, Kevin says, uh, do you trade a retracement? If not, why? Um, I don't trade retracement in a higher time frame because uh, the retracement might be temporary and it might go up towards major directions. So I'm a trend follower and I trade uh, in a style of in between day, day trade to swing trade. So uh, yeah, I don't really capture the retracement to sell. Uh, I think that will be more for the scalpers or intraday because uh, when I when I be in a trade, once I'm in a trade, then I want to hold it for a long time and trend to follow afterwards. So I don't really, yeah, do the retracement trades. Okay, yeah, thank you for joining everybody. Great to see you here. Oh, today I made three point. 3.2% gain. That's great. That's great. So please keep it up. If you follow, if you master to follow a trend directions, then um, you can make profits. In the month of March, we had many trends. In April also, we have many trends. So uh, trend to follow really uh, has advantage in these kind of markets. Okay, so yeah, so looks like it's still ranging on CAD, so I will simply continue to monitor. We'll come back to this pair also, but in the meantime, let me check some other pairs. I will go from top Euro USD. So Euro USD has been bearish, so I see Ichimoku is down in the daily after the breakout of the monthly trend line, it's going down. And then one hour is also showing bearish. I look for the sell chance in the five. So let's see. However, in the five minute, it's a bit ranging now. And uh, I don't see any selling edge. Uh, but one thing I can say is that once the market breaks the trend line, and looks like it's just happening right now. Looks like the market is breaking the trend line. So this is actually P wave also in the five. So, uh, it's breaking bearish. So after I see the breakout of the trend line, 
then um, I look for the setting edge. I mean, I look for the confirmation cell. So basically, I use confirmations in price actions, in lines. I use also bondage band in stochastics to sell. So right now, I prefer to wait for the dead cross of stochastics to sell. So let's just wait for it. Yeah, so right now, if you monitor this one, it's breaking bearish. So you might want to jump in the market. But actually, I don't. Um, I have to wait for the confirmations to sell. Otherwise, it might go bullish afterwards. Or it may be range for some more time. And it's not really time efficient. So never catch a falling knife. You have to wait for the confirmations to come to trade, to act. So I wait for the dead cross. And uh, okay, so this candlestick closed and the next candlestick is right now forming. And it's almost dead crossing. So in this case, I wait for another five minutes until this candle closes. And if there's a dead cross, I think that will be a good selling chance. Right now, if you look at the stochastics, it's just touching. And technically, this is not the dead cross. Whenever you see these cross signals, you have to wait for the clear crosses. Otherwise, it becomes fake and uh, it may turn bullish also. Like this way. I think you have to, you have seen these kind of patterns many times. Like uh, previously, was happening here too. So uh, we have to see the clear dead cross to sell. So I have to wait for that in the Euro USD. So that's... Uh, yeah, so we're going to come back on this one too. And then uh, let's see. Euro CAD in the 5. So this, is, this one is also bearish in higher time frames. So we will, I will look for the sell chance. Okay, so this is now ranging. Completely ranging. But uh, it also broke the trend line. Just like Euro USD. So that's one of the confirmations to sell. So I would wait for a couple more confirmations to sell. Uh, to be safer, um, I would wait for the breakout of the support in between this level and this level. Yeah. Then I, I wait for the clear support break to sell. I think that will be the safer way to trade because it may bounce and goes up. Um, but if I find, if I can find some confirmations to sell before the breakout I will also take it so that once the market breaks support it goes fast and it's time efficient and uh, I say this because this is only in the five minute this is not the higher time frame if this is daily chart then simply I won't touch this but uh, this pair is downtrending in the daily chart downtrending in the four hour and one hour also so in the five it could break the support because there are more sellers than buyers in higher time frames. So potentially it breaks bearish and that's why I don't mind taking a sell before the breakout after the confirmations. So uh, yeah, I will continuously monitor the Euro CAD. So uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah. So we have many trending pairs right now. So. It's time to trade, basically. Yeah, let's see. Oh, thank you so much for your comments. Cal says, uh, your videos has been very really helpful in my journey to be a full-time trader. Could you explain how to calculate the position size and leverage will affect it as I trade crypto? It's, not, it's confusing. Um, I don't trade cryptos, so I'm not sure how to calculate the position size. I only trade Forex. But uh, I can explain based on the Forex experience, briefly talking about how to calculate the lot size. And this is very simple because um, I use the website to calculate the lot size. Now let me put, put that one up here. So I use this website, Position Size Calculator. This is uh, offered by myfxbook.com and this is for free. You can, anyone can access to this website 
And whenever I enter the markets, um, I input these data here. So if I trade a EuroCAD, then I turn this to EuroCAD. I simply type EuroCAD. And I use the USD currency, so I use USD. But if you're using some other currencies, you can select your currency. And then account size, let's say if I have $10,000, then I just put 10,000 like this. This is my account size right now on the broker. And then risk ratio, this is the risk to stop loss. So every time you take a trade before you execute, you have to, uh, you have to uh, measure the pips, the stop loss before you trade. So like in this case, uh, if I sell right now, if I just place the sell right now, then my stop loss will be above the previous high in the five. I see two resistances here, so I think around this place will be safe to, for the stop loss. And before I place the sell button, I quickly take out this uh, this to price range in trading view and measure how many pips to stop loss. And when I take a stop loss here, that will be 70, uh, 37, 38 pips of stop loss. So I take this 38 and I input in this website. That would be 38 pips of stop loss. Oh, sorry, uh, this is uh, risk. So 38 pips of stop loss I put here under stop loss pips column. As for risk ratio, I usually take 2% risk to stop loss. So I put number two simply, 2% 2 risk to stop loss. And then uh, the trade size, uh, if you just click here, the lots, then you can convert it to units. And my broker offers 100,000 units as one lot. So uh, I put 100,000. But uh, sometimes the broker offers like 10,000 or sometimes even 1,000 as one lot. So this part, you have to check with your uh, broker's website. But usually I think it's 100,000 is like standard. So I simply put 100,000. But uh, like sometimes like in Japan, like Japanese brokers offers like uh, one lot as 10,000. So yeah, even if you say, if you, even if you see someone trades like one lot or 10 lot in uh, under Japanese broker, it's like actually, um, you know, um, like a, a bit uh, lower, like a one tenth lower than the amount. So I put this 100,000 unit here because that's my broker. And then simply click the calculate. And then I get the lot size. This is 0 0.68 lots. So, so this means that, let's say if I have 10,000 account with a USC currency on EuroCAD, if I risk 2% uh, to the stop loss 38 pips, with a 100,000 unit in my broker as one lot, then 0.68 lot is the correct lot size to go for. So simply, I input 0.68 lot and then press the sell button. So that once the market goes backwards to stop loss, like this, in case any ha anything happens, the market goes up to stop loss, then I, I lose 2% of my account. So this is how I manage my risk per trade. And in doing this, you don't really have to care about leverage. Uh, in terms of leverage, if you have 25, that will be just fine. Because uh, yeah, you won't be trading with a higher leverage in this way. You always trade with a low leverage below 20 or 25. And what's more important is risk management risks to stop loss management is more important. So every time you calculate the pips to stop loss and uh, take 2% or even 1%, sometimes I only take 1% or 2% or sometimes 3% depending on the market strength of the trends and then execute trades. So yeah, that's how I manage the lot size in this one. Yeah, this is very simple. But uh, yeah, this is uh, very important. Yeah, so 2% of 10,000 is 200. 
So when the market retraces back to stop loss, 38 pips with a 0.68 lot sizing, then uh, you will lose $200. Yeah, so as I'm talking like this, it uh, looks like the market is going down and there is a dead cross. But I think now Euro USD has the dead cross. So let me check. Yeah, so Euro USD has clear dead cross breakout of the trend line. And uh, okay, so in this case, uh, yeah, it broke the P wave nicely, breakout, dead cross. But uh, yeah, but let me check the strength chart Euro USD. Let me refresh the page. Euro is going, okay, going down. USD is going up. So this one is still continuously trending towards downtrend, major direction. So yeah, I prefer to, okay, so now I see the pin bar previously. There is a, this is price action. There was a pin bar like this, and I wait for the next, this candlestick close. If this candlestick closes below the pin bar, then that's my setting point. I will sell here, but if not, then I will simply stay away. So let's monitor if this happens or not for the next four minutes. In the meantime, let me check some other comments now. Let me just put the horizontal line here. So I wait for the close below the pin bar and then sell. So this is where the patience becomes important. Yeah, whenever you see charts, you have to think logically and you have to trade logically too, with less emotion. Yeah, I won't say no emotion because it's impossible. Like I mentioned on one of the videos on the BNF, I say no emotion, but I think it's almost impossible. So I would say less emotion is good. Yeah, but basically you don't need emotions in trades. You have to see charts logically, objectively, and rationally and take trades in this manner. Okay, Yudardo says, uh, I understand that you enter position in a lower time frame, 5 to 15. What time frames you follow after entering? Under what time frames do you exit? Uh, so afterwards, I, I monitor by the 5 minute until I set the break even. And after I set the break even, then I simply leave chart for maybe 3 hours, 4 hours and come back. And if the market is still going towards my direction, then I follow the daily time frame in this case, or the 4 hour. But if the market reverses backwards, I will just let it go and look for another opportunity. So for me, as a non-losing trader, is my motto, as I mentioned here, how to become a non-losing trader. So to, be to become a non-losing trader, you have to know which pair to trade, but what's more, which pair has higher probability that the market goes toward the direction so that you can set the break even and leave chart. Because after you set the break even, then um, that will be either break even, or break even or win game. And that's a game you wanna play every time you trade. And this is how I trade like this. So I trade with a break even or win game. So after I set the break even, so uh, yeah, even if you exit with the break even, then that's no emotion. You just, you don't lose. So uh, technically you can continuously look for some other pairs to trade. So yeah, but coming back to the question, after I enter, uh, I, I watch the five minute uh, to monitor the chart, to, to set the break even line. Okay, TikTok says, uh, can you talk about the market movement between the middle and the end of the US session, the beginning of the Australian sessions? Um, yeah, so I screen charts all the time, all the sessions, Asian and also uh, Pound, UK and New York. But I would say in the Forex pairs, I think um, UK and New York sessions are very strong, very volatile. So. I prefer to take the UK or US sessions. 
the beginning of the Australian sessions, uh, it's not really, you know, uh, not good because uh, it, it's got, uh, you know, high volatility and maybe high spread in the broker and the market may be spiky. So I don't recommend the beginning of the Australian session or New Zealand session. Okay, so looks like it's going down. Most likely it closes below the, the wick. This is closing in about 25 seconds, but most likely it closes. So if I see this, I will already execute. So, but just in case, let me check the Euro CAD also. Because Euro CAD might break the support also. Okay, Euro CAD is breaking the support. Okay, this one looks nice also. Dead cross band walk looks nice. And Euro USD looks nice. So, yeah, let's see. I would pick the Euro USD because, uh, yeah, I think the support is a bit weaker than Euro CAD. Uh, as I just see the chart like this, I see two supports here on the Euro USD in the five minute. But in the Euro CAD, looks like support is stronger. I can see many more supports in the past one, two, three, four times. So um, it may reverse backwards. But Euro, C Euro USD has less support previously. It's got only got one, two supports. So it may break bearish in this way. So for this, I will, I will um, take the Euro USD to trade. Yeah, so let me take my mobile. I will quickly take the stop loss. In this case, I take the stop loss here, 35 pips above from now. And uh, I will take 2% risk per trade. So this will be where I would enter right now, around the 1.0488 level. So let me take the... So usually when I execute, I d use mobile. I don't usually uh, use the MT5 on the PC because sometimes it's lagging. Sometimes it takes time to load the charts. So mobile is much more handy. So I take the mobile and uh, Euro USD. Okay. And take sell. Okay, looks like the market's going up. So I can lower. A stop loss. I'm taking 25 or 26 pips of stop loss. So I will calculate the lot size quickly on my mobile. Okay. And place a sell. So in case if you trade also uh, together, then always make sure that, uh, you know, always, this is only for the education purposes only, but please do at your own risk. So I have been trading many pairs today, or I mean this week. I was kind of away from the charts in the beginning or to the mid, mid to April because uh, I had nice profits in the month of March, but uh, yeah, looks like market still be active since last week, so I'm back in trading now. So usually in the month, I take up to 15 trades. In average, I would say 7 to 8 or maybe 10 trades per, per month, and my returns are 10% in average. You can check my videos. Uh, and uh, you can see my performance. On average, it's 10% per monthly basis with less number of trades. Okay, so uh, yeah, okay. So looks like uh, in seven minutes, I will switch to the membership live, Ichimoku membership live. So I will be ending the live soon. But continuously talk about the entry, edge entry positions uh, in Ichimoku members. So, yeah, I will 
keep holding this trade right now. And when the market reverses backwards, I will talk about the exit timing. So right now it's bearish. So you don't have to worry about it. You just follow the downtrend. So this is in the five minute. So although it's bullish candle, yeah, it's okay because overall it's bearish. So it should go down at some point. It might be resisted by the 20th of May and go down, or it may be resisted one of these Fibonacci levels on this uh, on this reverse end wave and go down. But anyhow, I still monitor the chart until the market goes down to set the break even. So uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. And uh, yeah, before I sleep or before I leave chart for a long time, I will make sure to set the break even. So if I set the break even on this pair or if I exit, then I will take another video and upload and share it with you. So for now, this is my trading strategy. But it looks like we have many pairs trending, like the green ones are all trending, like Euro USD, Euro CAD is trending, and USDJPY is also trending, uh, trending up nicely. And the USD Swiss front is also trending up. Pound USD is also going down. Pound CAD is also going down. AUD USD is going up, going down also. And ADC AD is going down. So uh, yeah, we have lots of trending pairs, but make sure you selective. You become selective to which one to trade and then you should be safe. So hopefully uh, you, you capture some nice pips today or this week, but watch out the news. Tomorrow we have many big news, so just be careful. The big news, and I will see you on the next one. So until I see you next time, please stay healthy and stay safe and stay gold. And for those who are Ichimoku members, I will continuously talk about the market together. Okay, so... Yeah, have a great, great day, and uh, I wish all the best on your trading journey. So, thank you so much. Stay gold. Mata ne. Bye for now.